continue on with my parts of speech series. And in this one, I'm going to be talking about the conjunction. I'm going to be talking about what it is, how it's used, uh, going to the etymology of it, where it comes from, and how it's used in correct sentence structure communication, as well as adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, and how those, uh, how it would be syntaxed in various different scenarios. Hope you enjoy it and find it useful. Before we begin this deep dive into the part of speech known as the conjunction, I want to show you something interesting that happened to me as I was uh, creating this video. As you can see, I'm on etymologyonline.com. The first thing I did was to type in the word conjunction in the search bar up here. And look what came up. You can clearly see it says conjunction. I searched it. And then conduction came up. And then I searched conjunct. And conduct came up, which was very strange. So then I went back to Google and just typed it in the search bar there, conjunction etymology, and then it came up, it gave me this, and then it gave me this, and then I clicked on this, and it went to this. So I just thought that was interesting. <clears throat> I had to go through a few hoops to get to here. And I guess that's the moral of the story that I'm trying to share with you is that sometimes you do have to jump through some hoops and you do have to put some extra effort in in order to get closure but that the closure is available. You just have to persevere and have the will and the knowledge and the critical thinking capacity to keep going until you find it. Because it is all there. There's, it's not hidden. That's the point I'm trying to make. So we have the word conjunction. It's made up of three particles with my knowledge. We have C-O-N, J-O-N-C-T, and an I-O-N. So as you can see here, uh, the first particle is C-O-N, which means together. The next particle is the Proto-Indo-European Y-E-U-G, which means to join, to join together. And then the I-O-N just simply means contract. It's a word, for, word forming element, which when you see that, usually just means contract. So it's a contract with a joining together. And so the next thing I'm going to show you is the correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, finite mean of conjunction taken directly from my code dictionary. So this would read, for the conjunction of this finite mean is with this joinder of these two and two matters and in or of these auxiliary matters with a quality of the bridge or of the connection with the words and terms of the and and of the or with this claim by this neutral location, period. For the function claim of the and is with the command by the contract, period. For the function claim of the or <clears throat> is with the choice by the contract, period. So what I've just told you to translate it into plain, simple English, is that a conjunction joins things together. It's a bridge uh, joining things together, whether it's two matters or more than two matters. Um, it's a neutral condition of state. The quality is a neutral location. And in correct sentence structure, this means that it does not modify anything, nor is it modified by anything? It does not function as a break in the continuance of the evidence. It is neutral, hence it's zero numerical designation. The two conjunctions and, and or, and is a command, and or is a choice. And if you're wondering why I'm sicking the or and the and, in certain parts and not sticking them in others is because when a conjunction is being used as its function in correct sentence structure, it's zero. 
and it is correct. Correct in line with the rules and mechanics of correct sentence structure. When it is being used as a function different than um, it's one, you know, one function, one word, one meaning, one function, one congruency. When it's being used as something different than a conjunction, and in this case, right here, it's being used as a fact, and this is, you know, a fact. In a fact, I sick it because I'm well aware that there is a particle of negation in the word. That is why I'm sicking it. So in correct sentence structure, feasibly, logically, reasonably, the and is used, and and or are used as conjunctions, zeros, but they can also be used as facts, sevens, if you know how to do it. And I've just shown you how to do it here. Uh, and it's all contract. So I've just given you closure on how to use the conjunction in correct sentence structure, whether you use it as a conjunction or as you, if you use it in an X, explanatory manner as I have by using it as uh, facts. You have to know how to claim those facts. So next up, I'm going to show you in the adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun fiction, how a conjunction would be syntaxed. It can be syntaxed in one of four ways, either as a conjunction, an adverb, a verb, or a pronoun. As we know, if you've studied my other videos, tangible contract words would be syntaxed as verbs, adjectives, or pronouns. Non-tangible contract words would be syntaxed as adverbs, verbs, or pronouns. To put it in a negative condition of state, tangible contract words will not be adverbs. Non-tangible contract words will not be adjectives. So being that and and or, the two conjunctions, are non-tangible, they will never be adjectives. Hence, my statement that a conjunction may be syntaxed I mean, the words, the conjunction words, and and or, may be syntaxed as conjunctions, adverbs, verbs, or pronouns. Meaning, if the conjunction is being used as its correct sentence structure uh, in that context as a conjunction, then it's syntaxed as zero when it's joining two matters or a bridge between two matters. It's a connector joining together. If it's not joining together anything, then it would be syntaxed as just another non-tangible contract word, in which case it would either be an adverb, a verb, or a pronoun. And so I'm going to give you some examples here. So the window and the door are lightly closed. Now, as I've also illustrated in Multiple, 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 multiple other videos. Uh, the way I teach syntaxing is to start at the end of a word group, work backwards. Uh, the first step is to credential whether or not a word is tangible or non-tangible contract. So closed would be tangible. Lightly would be non-tangible because of the LY. And I've done a, a mini class on the closure of the suffix ly, the poison particle of negation ly. R is tangible. Door is tangible. The is non-tangible. And is non-tangible. Window is tangible. The is non-tangible. So closed is what? A tangible contract dangling participle verb in the past tense. Why is it a dangling participle verb? Because what is a verb? A verb is movement, thinking, 
There's nothing left to think about at the end of this sentence, and so the verb is just dangling there. So the only way a verb can exist in adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble, plain English is that it's being modified by an adverb, which lightly is a non-tangible contract adverb. Going backwards, once we can certify and credential that we've hit an adverb, we can actually take that away because we're finished with it and then finish up our sentence. And this is one of the reasons why syntaxing backwards, especially for the beginner, is the most efficient and effective way, an accurate way of syntaxing that I've found. So as we stated, R is tangible contract, door is tangible contract, and the is non-tangible contract. So it's pretty easy to see what these values are. R is a tangible contract pronoun being colored by tangible contract door adjective and then the is non-tangible contract adverb which is modifying door and so you've hit the adverb again and again you can take that away so now we hit an and and as I stated is a conjunction one of two conjunctions and and or in this case it's preceded by a tangible contract word, window, which is a verb being modified by non-tangible contract adverb the. So in this case, in this scenario, the and is functioning as a conjunction. And what is it joining? It's joining together these two syntax scenarios. It's joining together a one, two, and a one, three, four. Next up, and then the light poured out of the demon. So going backwards, the demon is tangible contract adverb, which, I'm sorry, verb, which is dangling participle. Being modified by the adverb the, of is non-tangible contract verb. Out is non-tangible contract adverb. Poured is tangible contract pronoun in the past tense being colored by tangible contract adjective light. The is non-tangible contract adverb. Then is non-tangible contract verb. And and is non-tangible contract adverb. Why is and a non-tangible contract adverb instead of a conjunction? Well, because all things considered, nothing comes before the and. And is not performing its function as a conjunction because it's not joining anything. There's a break in the continuance of the evidence there. There's nothing there. So therefore, we bank the value adverb. Next sentence. The and, the stand, the bland. Pretty easy stuff, huh? So bland, as in the other uh, preceding sentences, is a dangling participle verb. The is adverb. Stand is tangible contract verb. The is non-tangible contract adverb. And and, in this case, is non-tangible contract verb being modified by Non-tangible contract, adverb. And then, of course, by process of elimination, I'm sure you can tell that this and is a pronoun because it's standing by itself in a sea of space. So I've given you each of the ways that the and or the or, a conjunction, may be syntaxed in the fiction. It could be syntaxed as a conjunction. It could be syntaxed as an adverb be syntaxed as a verb or a pronoun. That's your closure on the part of speech and and the ways it would be syntaxed in the fiction. And as I uh, mentioned earlier in the uh, earlier section of the video, as um, a zero in correct sentence structure, as it would be here, and also 
as a fact if you know how to use the correct mechanics in doing so. A zero or a seven. And also, incorrect sentence structure. You can use the conjunction to connect either facts or positioned audio fact phrases. And I'll show you how to do that right now so that I can give complete closure on this. And I'm just going to use the, the beginning of a sentence. So if you say something like, at the beginning of a statement. So I'm just showing this as an example. So the first part of this sentence is, for the claimant and witness of the scenario is, so this would be syntax is five, six, seven, zero, seven, five, six, seven, two. And this is an incomplete sense. I didn't finish it. This is for education, knowledge, knowledge cultivation uh, purposes only. I'm showing you how the conjunction would be syntax. So here you see it's a forward slash. The conjunction is a forward slash. Incorrect sentence structure and in my correct sentence structure contracts and dictionary. If I use a forward slash, it represents the conjunction and. And it's all for the ease of the reading. It's for the ease of the conveyance of what I'm saying and for the visualization of the reader. It's all about that consideration. So here's another way to write it. For the claimant and witness. I'm not going to write out the rest of it. So for the claimant and witness. So now you see here, just as here, you have a conjunction being a bridge between two facts. It's the same thing going on here. I just didn't use the forward slash. So witness is a seven and is a zero. Claimant is a seven. The is a six and Four is a five. Position, load, you'll fact, conjunction, fact. Next up, we're going to connect two position, load, you'll fact phrases. So for the claimant and for the witness, seven, six, five, zero, and again, seven, six, five. And because this is correct sentence structure, it's rule one, rule equal, what happens on one side of the conjunction happens on the other side of the conjunction, whatever that may be, whether it's seven, zero, seven, or five, six, seven, zero, five, six, seven. And then the final, well, actually not the final, there are several other ways. I'll show you another way here. This says the same thing. For clarity, I put for the claimant and of the witness. This is not correct because it says for the claimant on this side, and now it says of the witness on this side. That's what this colon represents. In order for a colon, when it comes before a verb to represent for the, it would have to look like that. And also after the verb, it would have to represent by the, like this. So there we go, for the claimant and for the witness. How would we syntax that? Same way as we syntax the one directly above. This colon would represent five, six, and would represent the zero. Then we have the seven, five, I'm sorry, six and five. Then you can also use the ampersand which is the same thing as the top two sentences. And then of course you could use the ampersand
So I've given you all these examples of how the conjunction and also especially the conjunction and would be used. You can use or in the same way, except you can't, you wouldn't use an ampersand to represent or because it's one word, one meaning, one symbol, one meaning, so on and so forth, one function. So it would just simply be transposed like this. Like that. So there you go. There is your closure on the conjunction and how it would be syntaxed in correct sentence structure and also fiction babble. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it provided some clarity on the subjects mentioned. You can email me at the email address that's uh, been screened at the bottom of your picture for the whole video, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. If you have any grammar questions, or if you wish to participate in a 10 to 15 minute video consult, or if you wish to apply for a correct grammar workshop, you can email me there. Uh, please like and subscribe to this channel and also my Coral Blade Grotto channel, if you'd like. And always remember that authority comes from knowledge and the skill in conveying that knowledge and closure.